Hey class, welcome to another episode of Brand Academy. As always, my name is Brand. I'm Mr. Wynn's twin brother. And uh, today he's having me finish off uh, chapter 2.3, right? You guys were talking about conditional statements. And, you know, you guys did these notes. We're going to do this on Monday, right? A little reminder we're doing that on Monday, right? Creating your own statements. And uh, we left off here for by conditional statements, okay? So we can get started. By conditional statements, remind where by, right? By means to, right? So there's two conditions that need to work, right? Two conditions that need to work in order for it to be a by conditional statement. And these conditions are the conditional, the basic one, the conditional statement, conditional, is explain that right? Conditional and converse, okay? Slight reminder, conditional is if P, then Q, right? And converse is if Q, then P. Basically, both ways need to work, right? You have the original way, and you switch it. The other way needs to work as well. So for the notation for biconditional, the notation is this, which kind of makes sense. It's just a double arrow. Right, and the way we read this is P if and only if Q, P if and only if Q. So if and only if is the phrase for biconditional. Okay, that means it works both ways. Okay, so again, the symbol, how you say it, P if and only if Q, and you want to do a shorthand. I do a P if a double F. If you want to shorthand it, it's optional. Okay. So here's an example of a biconditional statement. So again, it works both ways. If angle one, if angle one and angle two are if and only what the heck? That does not make sense. This is a typo. My my brother messed up. Mr. Wynn messed up. Okay, it's, it should say, if angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. Okay, squeeze that word in there somewhere. Angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary if and only if angle 1 and angle 2 add up to 90 degrees. So basically, you want to ask yourself, is it true going this way, going the conditional way? Is it true? Angle 1 and 2 are complementary if and only if angle 1 and 2 add up to 90. So to answer that, this way is true. Okay. It is true. Now you want to see going the converse way. If angle 1 and angle 2 add up to 90, right? You go in this way first. If angle 1 and angle 2 add up to 90, then... Uh, they are complementary. And that right there will be true as well. Okay, so that's an example of a biconditional statement. It has to work both ways. Okay. Let's scroll down to an example here. Uh, these, you don't have to write the question down. Oops, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Right here. Boom. Uh, this is in your textbook, it's on page 116, but no need to flip through it. We'll just do a couple of example problems. By conditional isn't like heavily focused uh, in this chapter, so don't worry too much about it. Just understand that by conditional, it needs to work the original way, the conditional way, and it needs to work the converse way, okay? Two ways. All right, so we actually just did number one. We just did this one. Two angles are complements if and only if they had the sum of 90, okay? And that's what we said was true, okay? So the goal for these problems is that we're given a biconditional statement and we need to determine whether if it's truly biconditional, which means it has to work both ways or false. You need a counterexample. Okay, so for two and three, yeah, pause the video here. Pause it here. Try it for number two real quick, okay? If there is no school, or there is no school, if and only if it is Saturday, okay? 
So you guys pause the video if you want. If not, I'm gonna continue through. Let's go forward here. There is no school if and only if it is Saturday. Is that true? So if there is no school, then it is Saturday. Right, that's what the conditional way is saying. If there is no school, then it is Saturday. That is gonna be false, right? Because just last Monday, right? Last Monday, did we have school? Nope, we didn't have school last Monday because it was a Labor Day, right? And so that is not a Saturday. So that's why that would be false. And what about if we have, uh, going the other way, the converse way, Technically, we don't have to do this way. Since one of them is false, you're done, right? It's not even biconditional. Biconditional is only true if both statements are true. If one is false, you're done. Okay, and the counterexample for this one would have been Labor Day. Okay, what about the other way, just for fun? If it is Saturday, then there's no school. If it is Saturday, then there's no school. Depending on what type of school, right? Some people have like, um, like religious school or a language school, right? Some people are like learning Chinese or Vietnamese, whatever language, on on Saturday. So all because it's Saturday doesn't mean there's no school. Sometimes kids have Saturday school. That's the worst type of schooling. Okay, so this is also false, and a counter argument would be, well, Saturday school. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay, let's see, check number four here. Two, the, the absolute value two x equals four, if and only if x equals two. So this is saying, if this equals four, then x is negative, or is two. This statement here is gonna be false. What's the counter example? Well, x could be negative 2. x could be negative 2. Yeah. And even going the other way, if f equals 2. Oh, going the other way actually works though. I'm going to show that example here. I'll write it here. If x equals 2 then 2x equals, or the absolute value of 2x equals 4. This here would be true, right? If this statement here is true, it will be valid, right? If x equals 2, you plug it in here, it's going to equal 4. All right, there's no really counter argument for that one. Okay, because remember, for counter arguments, you need to assume the if is true. So this, you can't change your x value. x is 2, then this here would be 4, right? So that would be, it would be a true statement. All right, so both 2 and 4 are not biconditional. Sorry, I am writing all over the place. But just know that they're not biconditional. Okay, that's really it for the end of 2-3. Yeah, this was my answer key. Okay, 2-5, guys. If you uh, don't recall, we actually did 2-5 in the beginning, too. All right, 2-5 are all of these posh lists here. All right, this worksheet. Okay, so take out this worksheet, right, in your notebooks or so forth. You can take it out. And the remaining place, this bottom place here, you're going to write your new notes here. This part is very short. Okay, so one, take out this worksheet or that page where you have this on. You're gonna add a little bit more notes at the bottom here. I'm gonna show you guys the proof process. So you're not have, you don't have to write all this down. I'll let you know what to write. But chapter 2.5 is postulates and proofs, okay? The big P word here. So just looking at this process here. Okay, just read it, no need to write it. The proof process. Okay, the way it works is that you'll be given a hypothesis. 
basically an if statement. If something, then this has to be true, okay? But now it won't be so direct. There's gonna be, you need to reason through all your work now. Okay, before it was like quick if then, but now it's gonna be if, and then something tricky to prove. The then is gonna be tricky, and you need to prove it, which is what you're doing for the process here, okay? So you need to recall your definitions, okay? I suggest you guys either make like flashcards or just have a list of all your vocabulary words, right? Like complementary angle, as it to 90. Supplementary, as it to 180. Vertical angles are congruence, okay? And so forth. Those are your part three main ones for now. So for part of your homework for this part, majority is, is this, okay? Like these diagrams. So you guys should be comfortable with that for the most part. If not, we're gonna go over all of our homework on Monday. But let me give you an example here of a proof process. So this is what you're gonna write down, okay? If you guys need an extra example, example three would be good to read. Okay, it's in your textbook. Or you can literally just pause the screen there. Up to you guys, okay? But it's like, it's just proving things, right? If you look at example three, given M is the midpoint of XY, prove XM is congruent to MY. So you need to prove this is congruent to MY. Okay, so obviously this is very intuitive already, so it's not the best example, but just reading it out loud here, if M is the midpoint, right, that means it splits the segments in half, like that. Right, since X and M and MY have the same measure, we know by the definition of congruence, the segments have the same measure. Okay, so you're basically going from XM equals MY to segment XM equals MY. Okay, remember the difference between equals and congruent? These are just values, right? They're just numbers. This here is a, the geometry equals, right? The geometry equal sign is congruent. Okay, so this would be your same size, which is the value, but also the same shape. And by shape, it's saying that they are a segment, okay? Okay, so you guys can you know look into that a bit more. Part not as import is not as important as the example I'm gonna show you here. So this please write all down. Okay, this is the proof process. This I need you guys to write down. So here's our scenario. If angle one is congruent to angle three, then angle two is congruent to angle four. So looking at the diagrams here, I have angle one and two in that diagram, and three and four in this diagram. So the way it's gonna work is that's your hypothesis. You're given this scenario. You're given angle one, it's congruent to angle three. Now your goal is to go from this and somehow prove to me that angle two is congruent to angle four. So right here, you wanna prove this, okay? So in the middle here is your statements and reasonings. I'm just gonna do bullet points for now. So, here's step one. Boom. Oops. Angle one and angle two are vertical angles. Okay, that is true, right? We kind of know what vertical angles are, right? They're opposite each other, right? They point away from each other. So if they're vertical angles, what does that say about angle one and two? They are congruent. Ah, where's my one? They are congruent, okay? Now, what can I say about three and four? Okay, looking at angle three and four, boom. Oops. They are also vertical angles, which means that they are congruent. If I'm going too fast, pause the video, okay? I'm trying to, trying to post a short YouTube video. So we know that, right? That's like general statements. One is congruent to two because they're vertical angles. Angle three is congruent to angle four because they're vertical angles. Now, 
look here. I'm going to say angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Okay? And that's because why? Where did we see that? That's from our hypothesis, right? That's from our given. So we're going to call that our oops, given. Right? In purple, that's what we were given in the beginning here. So that's, just, that's an extra statement that we got to help solve this. And remember, our goal is to get to angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. So now, how can I connect this here? Okay. What can I switch out for angle 1? Oh, sorry, for angle 3. Angle 3, do we see how angle 3 is congruent to angle 4? So I'm going to switch angle 3 here. I'm going to switch angle 3 for angle 4. This process is called substitution, okay? Like you're just switching it out, right? It's kind of like you're plugging in a variable. Like if x, like up here, if x equals 2, and you have like x plus y equals 4, well, you simply could just switch out the x for a 2, right? You just substitute. And then now, what can I switch out for the 1? Look at the 1 here. The 1, I can switch out for the 2. And that came from there. Did we reach our goal? The answer is yes. Okay, We were able to get to our conclusion. Which angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. So that right there, guys, is the proof process. Okay, you're going from these images here. You're given, right? You state what you know, right? You know vertical angles are congruent. So that's like a go-to, right? If you see vertical angles, you can just say, hey, well, angle one and angle two are congruent. Angle three and angle four are congruent. And from there, you got to substitute. Okay, just dipping our feet into this proof process, okay? Uh, your homework, just a reminder, yeah, 30 and 31 are the proofs, okay? So maybe for 31, use Bob as well, All right? Use Bob, back of the book to help you out, and um, do your best, okay? And on Monday, we'll go over it. Please make sure you do your Google form um, to let me know what homework problem you want me to go over, or not, not me, my twin, Mr. Wynn, for him to go over in class, okay? All right, guys. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. Sorry this video was out longer than expected. Okay, but have a good rest of your day.